So this video wanted to go over, well, since we did show this Shelly One Plus, is how do we use this in a garage door, just like we did with the original Shelly One. Still one of my favorite solutions for doing the garage door openers that keep it local without putting your crap in the cloud and then one day somebody decides to shut off that server because they just can't do it anymore and now your garage door won't open. That sucks. So keep it local. Do something simple like a little Shelly. They're very inexpensive and what's cool about these, you can run them on DC power. So it's kind of low voltage. You can hook up a sensor, several different ones, such as this little reed sensor, you put on the door, it'll let it know when the door is open or closed. There's multiple ways to do that, but it's really cool. You can set this up in Home Assistant, etc., to open and close that garage door. So let's check it out. If you want to look at the one for the Shelly one, I got the link down below. I did the whole OTA upgrade thing of this and plus did the garage door. We're going to jump straight to doing the Shelly one in the garage door. Shelly one plus in the garage door, I mean, I guess. Well, further ado or no further ado, let's get it done using 12 volts DC. So don't freak out. Yes, this is not using mains power. I like to do the garage door with the Shelly one and we're going to do this with the Shelly one plus. Of course, this is probably still one of my favorite solutions for the Shelly one for doing the garage door. Reason why we could put Tasmoda ESP home, whatever on this using OTA. Plus you had these simple pin headers. You could change this to 12 volt DC and then you could hook up your reed switch for the door being open or closed. And then if you really wanted to, you could attach something else to another GPIO pin. Well, we're going to do it with a Shelly One Plus. Now it's a little different, of course, since it's the ESP32 Solo. Same principle is you have this door sensor and this is just a reed switch, a magnetic switch. This actually attaches to the garage door and you'll attach this to the wall or whatever, depending on however you want to do it. I've seen these attached to floors or whatever. There's a ton of different types of reed switches. This one's just more of a, I guess you say hardened one because of the type of wire and it's got the bolts and yeah, I've had these, this one in my little garage for probably over 10 years and it hasn't failed yet. So I just stuck with it. And of course, I'll leave the link to that stuff down below. But basically, if you're not sure what a reed switch, it basically the magnet just goes next to it and the door opens. Well, then it breaks the connection is this one has a red, a green and a black. And if you use the green and the black on this particular one, that is normally open, meaning that if the door is open, then the connection is open. So why do I do it that way? Well, when the, cause you want the door closed for the most part. So when the door is closed, everything has to work. The wire has to work. The magnet has to work. It can't fall off the door. If any of that fails, then it shows as open. So then you know, it's open. You're like, Oh wait, why is it open? It's not really open. And then you can go address whatever situation. If you didn't do it the other way, well, then you would have a bad day and you wouldn't know it really failed. The way this is wired is using that 12 volt power supply. It's just a little bench power supply. And if you're curious, it's got a little flicker to it from the camera. This is the amperage and we're using 0 0.02 amps at the most. So it should give you an idea of the power supply you need for it. I mean, let's just see what the relay clicks. So when we do close the relay, it does go to what 0 0.4 at the most. I find that these little wall warts, you can get them in like one amp, 12 volt, like off of some old junk routers. I know you don't use consumer junk routers anymore. So, or whatever you can get these off of. I mean, hell, even these are, some of these are even UL listed, make you all warm and fuzzy. The reason why you use 12 volts is because of that reed switch and you don't want to put mains power through that reed switch. 
because it's not rated to do so. So the way this works is when you want to open or close it is on the garage door, you have this one and zero and we'll zoom in. And the one in the zero is just the dry contact relay. And what that basically means is this is just going to connect. So it's not going to change or input voltage or whatever. It's just going to connect these two screws together. And that would be like on most garage doors, except the digital push buttons that basically you're just pushing that button and we'll go over a diagram. So we're going to test this with a voltmeter just to see in how it works with our garage door programming in Tasmoda. And right now we just have it where this is going to break and set the connection. So we should see it when I go close to it, it closes the relay and it works. Now we don't want that to happen in Tasmoda because then the door would close and then it would push the button and hold it down and then that would be bad. Yeah, let's not do that. But we're gonna jump in the console and fix all this stuff. So the wiring for this new bad boy, it's a little bit different, so do pay attention. And they do have the little instruction manual in there, but hey, just check this out because it sometimes makes easier to see with pictures, right? So we do these video things. So one thing you may want to just remember always, I know you're thinking, well, L is kind of always the hot in the AC side, but it's not on this particular device on the DC method. You take the negative of your DC. Now do check it with a voltmeter if you don't know what your wire is. Just check it with, put it on DC and look for negative or positive. Flip it around, you'll know what it is. Now, the negative will go in the L and one side of your read switch, that's that blue line here, will also go into the negative. Then your positive from your power supply will go in the 12 volt. The purple here is the actual other line going to the read switch. Doesn't matter which way you do on those because that read switch just opens and closes. So there's not any way to really wire it backwards there's going to be a button that's on your wall. Now, if you have the digital type, well, you will have to use this. Maybe I've seen some solutions where they actually solder to the actual buttons on the garage. Maybe that's not a good idea, but I've also seen some people get an extra garage door opener because it's probably kind of disposable. You can get another one of those fairly easy without having to call somebody and redo. Well, you can add a new garage door. Say you, you have a third car, just get another garage door opener and you can solder up to those buttons exactly the same way here. Now we're gonna be running wire from the Shelly One Plus up to the garage door. Now I like to usually mount this up on the garage door so you don't have to run it that long. And then you'll use those same wires to put in the same exact slot because you're just pushing the button just like you would add another button. And that's pretty much it. And then just go ahead and test it out and you should see the door open and close. It's pretty slick and this stuff is not in the cloud and some other integration crap and it's just going to work and be super reliable. And of course, if you have any questions or doubts on any of this, take a bunch of pictures, bunch of pictures, all the various things and everything. Scroll to the bottom of the video description. Yeah, go ahead and press like while you're at it and subscribe if you're not. Yeah, I know, shameless plug there. But scroll to the bottom, you should see the Join Us in Discord link. And you can come post all your pictures and ask questions there. A bunch of people will help out. Now, I'll probably do a new blog post for this one because it's got the template and whatnot. And, but I'm going to reference pretty much my old one. We'll give it a shot and see how well it works. Now, we need the switch mode one, too, because it actually sets the way the read switch is. So we'll come into the console, put our switch mode one, two in, power on state zero, because when we want it to turn on, like say if there was a power loss, we don't want it to turn on the relay that we don't want it to cycle the garage door. Set option zero, we don't need it saving the state of the relay each time. And then the pulse time is 10. And that's, we'll play with the number and see how it is. 
that could depend on the garage door, basically how long you want it to hold the button before letting go. Then we need to decouple the relay from the actual switch, which is our read switch, because we don't want them to be tied together. And we also want to post that status so we know if the door is open or not. And we're going to also use a publish to. Publish to means it's a retain message. I know you may be thinking, well, why well, I got told retain's bad. No retain is actually good in some cases and it's bad. I know I did a way old video on that, of that MQTT retains love hate thing. But anytime retain is a status like going out, you're usually fine with that if you use the last will and testament. That way you can see if it goes unavailable when it falls off the network. It's just that command. You don't want to ever send a command retain. That's the bad part. Because if you have a retain command of saying open the door, anytime it reconnects to the network, it's going to open the door. So we'll put this rule in. Basically, this is saying switch one state zero do publish the status closed, status open. And that's all pretty much that one does to MQTT. We'll turn that on with rule one space one. And then we need to go throw this in the YAML. But before we jump into Home Assistant and do that, I just want to go check and make sure that this is all working with the door. So now if we go to the main menu and if we just come in here and hit toggle and basically it should turn on for a tenth of a second. Probably heard the meter on the mic is pretty loud from over there. And you can also see it toggle it gets continuity. And so that's that pulse time of if you sent that command to open or close the door, it would just hold it for a little bit and then let go. So we should see when we come in here to the console and when we do actually toggle the magnet as we would open or close the door. So now we place the magnet on there. It's actually showing the status of the Shelly garage is closed. And of course, since we open it, there it goes. Now see this topic where it says garage door in the middle? On all these, you'll need to change that to what yours is. And where you find that was just where I was at when we were testing it. Of course, you want to test this on the bench first. As you see this, whatever you named the MQTT topic, you can see it says stat Shelly one garage. You'll need to make that the same as yours in your configuration. So I don't have a cover on mine and we'll paste that in there. That was our topic. I'm going to grab this entire thing, paste it in, and we'll cut this out. Make sure there's no blank spaces. Good old YAML editing, right? And we'll just paste this over. However you want to edit this file is up to you. And you shouldn't need to change anything else because the state open and state closed is open and closed here. And if you did want to flip that, you could flip flop it here or you could flip flop it using the switch mode. We'll change the name Shelly one plus garage and we'll do a check config and you don't have to restart home assistant. You can actually come in here and hit reload manually configured MQTT empty entities. And then we should be able to see it. We'll add a new card entities and Garage, Shelly One Plus Garage. Save. Now you can come in here and just add like a binary sensor. I think I did show that in here if you wanted to add that. Yeah, if you did want to do a just a binary sensor because it's sometimes hard to see that little icon, you can come in here and add just you a secondary binary sensor right below it and just say like open or close. A lot of times it's easier to read than that stupid little icon with a couple dashes. But of course there's tons of different ways you can do that. So we should be able to hit the button here and there you can hear it beep and you should be able to see the continuity on the meter and we'll simulate the door closing. And there you are, the little door closes and that's it. Pretty much works with the Shelly One Plus. Now one bonus you can do since this is ESP32 is you can come in here 
If you did put Tasmoto 32 solo Bluetooth bin, of course, we'll leave the link down below where you can put that on there. All using the GUI, of course. The main menu, configuration, configure BLE, and you can enable Bluetooth and hit save. Or you could do set option 115, but as you can see, I gotta turn my meter off, or it turned itself off. But as you can see, I do have the little Xiaomi sensors around the house. If I can find one, this little guy, if you can see it here, this is one of the little Xiaomi sensors and it's picking it up and it will bring it into Tasmoda. And then you can go do all the things with them. So if you wanted to do something in the garage and pick up temperature sensors, this is the perfect solution for it. It has Bluetooth. And even though it's still, it's doing Bluetooth scanning, you can still push the button and the garage changes, close it. You can pick up these little temperature sensors and I'll leave the link down for these. And these you do put some little firmware on them, but it's not any type of flashing that you would think. It's just actually pairing them up with your phone or computer and then going to a website and put them on there. It's that simple. It's kind of boring actually. So I appreciate you watching, hanging out. Come hang out with us in Discord. And yep, y'all know the drill. Goodbye. Hit that like button for me to do a backflip. <laughs>